Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, December eighth. Really nice day for the markets today. Look at look at the uh, the averages, you know, in terms of where they um, where they made their gains today through the cash session. So nine thirty to four o'clock. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you know that I talk about on average where the market rallies or where it you know makes its performances in the after hours market right buying the close selling the open is usually uh, where the gains are made over time however once in a while we get a day where you know we get a nice uh, trending day and it looks like this is uh, this is what we got a little bit today especially in the small caps geez uh, they rallied from open to close uh, two percent that's a nice trading day that we got today so we'll look at some of these uh, you know where we are in the terms of the, uh, the averages and the S&P chart in just a second. By the way, if ever this video looks a little bit fuzzy to you, it's just because YouTube hasn't finished rendering it yet. So, you know, just wait another, you know, you can stop the video and wait, reload it and wait another 15 minutes. But that's how uh, YouTube works. All right. So let's get a little bit into um, today's price action. You know, I think today just, you know, a lot of momentum, a lot of momentum besides the major sectors that I'm showing you in here, you know, a lot of these small cap names the SPACs continue to run on good news you know anything that's just you know has decent news on it is running with it right it's just uh, it's pretty it's a pretty tremendous market we're gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about that I'm gonna take a step back and um, and talk a little bit about where we are in the marketplace too before we do that and then, of course, I'll go over my trades, right? And we'll talk about um, you know, a couple of the trade videos that I did today for members too, which I think were, uh, which were pretty good, I think, in, ter in terms of first day performance on you know some things. So um, look at the the oil services today, up four point two percent. So these guys aren't these things are not going away. Um, again, they they seem to have kind of changed the. Um, you know, what they have been doing recently, you know, if you look at XLE, for example, they're not, you know, previously what we would see is like a little bit of a bounce and then, a, you know, a fade back lower, a little bit of a bounce and a fade back lower. Um, this has really changed when the first vaccine came out uh, back on 11.9. It's now has basically just changed the overall trend like like flipping the switch and now we're seeing you know rallies a little bit of pullbacks rallies a little bit of pullbacks um, this was a little bit bigger of a pullback but we're basically right back to where we were and right back to this last virgin point of control takeout so this area will be interesting i think if we can get above 40 40 60 um, you know that means that we do kind of conquer this um this last bit and we'll see if this can continue to swing up but I talked about a contrarian trade in energy stocks, uh, I believe, you know, towards the end of last week. And, um, you know, that seems to be doing quite fine so far. But, yeah, just interesting. Again, I like to talk about sometimes when, when there's different areas of the market participating. And, um, and then, you know, of course, areas that continue to come back a little bit. So um, in terms of that, that are showing really good strength and where the dip gets bought. So one of the things that I mentioned was, uh, you know, kind of going into today, and I think I talked a little bit about it yesterday too, was, you know, the clean energy stocks made such a big run over, you know, basically about a month, right? They got a little, they got ahead of themselves. They got really overbought. If you look at the RSI on the bottom of the screen, the relative strength index, they got to about an 85. So they needed to cool down a little bit, right? Well, they cooled down. They kind of came into the 20 day moving average. Um, and then they've been kind of, you know, making some small inter incremental gains. And then today they took off again. So um, we caught that pretty decently in the room today. You know, how this works for me and my analysis is, you know, I like to kind of look at the overall sector and, and the ETF, but then I like to drill down into the into the component parts. So um, we saw some some decent setups. Um, I'm trying to think of the one name that I sent out earlier. What, what was the video that I sent out on the three stocks? Sorry, I'm I'm drawing a blank. It's been it's been a long day. What did what did I send out earlier? Um, this is the API video. I think if I go into my commentary channel, um, plug, <laughs> sorry, like I said, there's, there's so many movers today, but plug had a huge day, you know, where this kind of came from was you're going to see this a lot in these clean energy stocks, right? You know, basically trend up, um, move back into support, 20 day moving average, 
hold, and then bounce. And then this thing, like I said, a couple incremental small days. And once, for me, the trigger is, you know, going back to the one-hour chart and watching for that trigger. Um, and you'll kind of see this pattern, like I said, over and over. Fuel cell was a little bit different. Fuel cell, the move, you know, it's got a bigger value area to get through for this week. Keep in mind, when I'm on the one-hour chart, this is the value area for this week. Next week, we get a whole new value area. So if it continues to chop around, it'll be an easier value area to get through. Um, another one that was that we that we caught was this BE, right? Bloom Energy, right? And again, you know, we're kind of noticing the strength in a couple different names. What happens is then we start to see call buying in in the names, right? And that's a little bit of um, that you can use for confirmation, you know, that there's that there's momentum there for the name. So that works, you know, really well. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that group, but we could talk about three or four other names if we wanted to, right? So PBW which I'm not, I'm going to move on, but here's the day's movers in this. Tesla, by the way, um, which is also, I believe, somewhere in this ETF too. Uh, yeah, here it is. You know, managed to close positive, you know, after announcing a $5 billion uh, offering today. So, this, you know, just shows you again, you know, this thing is getting bought into being added into the, into the S&P. Um, FUV was, was another name, um, LTHM, you know, all these, you know, I mean, this is not, these are not small moves. The solar names got going today too. Kind of a same, similar story. They didn't have quite as much uh, momentum to them, but they were also up 2%. Notice where they closed, you know, right at the top of value. So when we set these up in the trading room, you know, when it's in the beginning of the day, what I usually say is, hey, I think it can get to this point and you know, here's a place to take some some money off the table, and then you can kind of see how it responds to that, right? For example, plug, there wasn't much, right? This thing got through value, or it it got through the top of value on the daily, and just kept powering through with with ease, right? So it got to, and I mentioned 27.30 was a place to take a target, excuse me, um, 27.60. And then you can kind of play, you know, with your last bit or, you know, or portion of the trade. So, so very strong. Um, you know, here's a couple of names that, you know, I always show my trades. So we'll talk about that for a minute. And then I'll go back to the S&P chart because I wanted to, um, I wanted to kind of bring it back to over, overall picture for the market. But um, if you remember in yesterday's video, if you're a regular viewer of the, um, of my videos, I talked to in minute 18, you can go back and you can look in yesterday's video, but I talked about how we saw all this call activity in PDD and the stock did very little, right? So I didn't, you know, I'm very cognizant now about how much risk I want to add. Um, I'll get to that thought in a second. But, you know, I talked about this name yesterday saying, hey, it's, uh, you know, there was definitely some call accumulation and, and some big orders in, in call activity. Um, so, you know, if I'm not going to get into it, if, I, if I'm not going to go after the name that day, what I always do will set an alert, right? And it's a big part of the process. You know, if you're a full-time trader or even a part-time trader, one of the things that you want to do is do a little bit of setup process, right? We call it homework. Um, it's preparation. But you can't, you know, obviously the way that this market is moving, there is so much momentum. There's so many small cap names that are moving. Um, bottom line, there's just, there's just a ton of names that are flying. And you can't trade every one of them because there's no way that you can manage, you know, every position very well unless you have a team of five people behind you so a lot of times what you do is if you're not going to take a trade set an alert at an area what's called where you would care in a name you know so i did that um yesterday and i think i even talked about that in yesterday's video i said hey i'm watching this name for tomorrow we talked a little bit about it in the pre-market session too this morning for the in the ttg pre-market session which we start every day at 905 well i've been starting them later but right around 9.10 uh, in the morning this week. But um, once this thing got going, and then we also saw some call activity. So, you know, I had to chase a little bit for this thing, right? Um, what time did I, yeah, I said I'm a little bit late on this, right? This was at, what time did I put this trade on? Uh, it's not giving me a time. So I guess I guess a few minutes after, after the open, 
right? Um, and I put this thing on and made some money. And then once, you know, for me, if I'm in short-term calls, right, we know that the short-term calls move very quickly. And if you want to stay in a name and you don't ha want to worry about the implied volatility coming back in and the theta decay and a short-term option, you know, I, I go in and I buy a little bit of stock. So I bought some stock, um, and I was able to hit a target in the stock too afterwards. So, and now I'm holding, um, you know, I'm holding the balance of some stock, you know, looking, looking for some continuation. To me, it's just an easier way to manage. I know some traders, all they do is they trade options or they trade stock. For me, if you can kind of use, you know, the, you could use both um, as long as you kind of are comfortable with doing it. But, you know, it's just several tools in a toolbox, right? So, um, I like once to capture a decent fast move using options. And then if I like the name and I want to see if there's continuation in the name, a lot of times what I'll do is, is buy the stock, right? Because, you know, stock does not have any expiration. It doesn't have any implied volatility that's going to move against you from the market maker standpoint. It doesn't have any theta decay. Right, so it's important. This VL, VLDR that we talked about yesterday too. This, I mean, it's crazy. Buying a stock for seventeen dollars one day and and you know selling a portion of it at twenty one sixty with really no news. You know, it's not like it had earnings. So again, just kind of the market that um, that we're getting right now. So. Yeah, um, and um, you know what I'm doing as well. If you kind of go back up here, um, you know, if you look at the kind of um, the products that we offer here, you know, one of the things that I started doing a couple of weeks back is um, some videos on swing trades, like a quick two, three minute video. So I talked about that as well in API, right? This is another name, right? Just like PDD, it's like, hey, I'm watching this name, right? I know everybody loves Kathy Wood. Um, Kathy Wood has been, you know, accumulating this name and um, it didn't do much on earnings. It kind of went a little bit lower. So again, I placed an alert on where I personally care, which is a break out of the, um, a break out of consolidation, a break out of value. So uh, as soon as, as soon as I got the alert, you know, to go off, you know, right around 4070, um, I jumped into the stock really without looking because I already knew the setup. Right? So again, that's the preparation part of trading. Right? And I think really, for me, that's where I separate myself you know, in terms of performing. You know, um, really doing a little bit of research, having, uh, having a trading system as the market webs, uh, you know, where I'm looking for break, you know, break out of consolidation. Um, you know, that, those are things that I want to capitalize on. And as long as I'm doing you know, the preparation part you know, I can get on top of some of these trades. Even, you know, in some of these names, like this is not one that saw any option activity to it. This is one that, um, you know, sometimes what happens is once the name starts to move, then you see the option activity, right? So sometimes if you do your homework, um, you can catch these, you know, before the, the call buyers come in. That's when it really gets fun. If you've ever noticed that before, right? If you get into a name before it really starts to, you know the big part of the move happens the call buyers will find it right half of what we see with the with the call activity is not so much the, that they know something well they do know something the stock is moving and they want to participate in momentum right that's that's the majority of option activity that we see on the tape you know on the call side on the aggressive side is they're just running with they're just running with price right every once in a while we do see that positioning too where funds are are going out a couple months and they're doing the research and, and so forth. But the faster stuff, the shorter term stuff is just momentum call buying. All right. So I'm um, just to kind of go back. So that's another trade that we did. And, um, and then for me, like, you know, I'm going through every day, a little bit of exercise of just making sure that I'm checking my positions and, you know, getting out of some, some risk, right. Um, making sure that I'm only holding like the best hand that I think, right. The best positions, right. I use the analogy too a lot of times, you know, putting the best players on the field, right. I don't want to keep accumulating positions in this market. You know, I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm a risk manager in this. So not only a trader, but a risk manager. All right, so let's talk a little bit about where we are in the S&P. Now, I sent out a chart, as always, we send out a, an S&P roadmap to members every morning. And I said, be careful of this. If we start moving down, you know, the 80% rule did go off. 
the 80% rule means that if you start to if you start a period outside of value just as we did on Monday and if we start to move inside value it triggers what's known as the 80% rule meaning it's there's an 80% chance that we move from one side of the value area to the other um, we didn't get that it did trigger um, but we snapped back right when we got to the point of control so this was nice now we're back outside of value and we're trending again now um, I get the question from time to time you know which is perfectly normal you know what do you do at this point right um, one of the things that I find a little bit comical but it's not uh, I'm not picking on anybody because everybody says this oh if I could only get a little bit of a dip here you know I would add risk um, that's kind of a fallacy um, believe it or not because I'll tell you what happens when when there's a big dip everybody runs for the hills right when when that happens everybody like there's a reason when you get a dip right it's not just ho oh, hum the market's just pulling in one or two percent for no reason there's always there's usually a reason that it occurs right and then when that reason you know when that reason comes to the comes to the forefront people are like oh well that ch you know that changes everything i don't want to buy into this right so um, what I did was kind of talk about this at the end of the day, which I'm going to talk about with you here. And if we go to the CF commentary channel, you could see I kind of wrote up a little bit of the thing here, right? So, um, you know, this person on, on CNBC mentioned, yeah, I would buy the next dip. Well, would you rather, um, and, I, and again, I floated this question in the, in, the, in the trading room towards the end of the day, but would you rather want to be where the white arrows are or where the red or, or buying on the red um, so there's a couple points here to make and I'll give you my opinion my opinion may not be right but I'm gonna give it to you when this happens with the white arrows right when we when we really trend like this I can tell you that's where I make a lot of money right when we start to do this and break down um, notice that you know this dip that we saw I've been showing this this you know a couple times now through the last two weeks when we start to dip it's not sometimes it's not incremental like oh we go down you know two percent three percent oh i'll buy it and and the market just recovers sometimes if you look at when this dip happened it occurred for a, the whole month right and the and part of the reason why that occurs is because the market probably went up a little bit too far right the momentum was really running hot so once the once we start to break down um, really it takes some time for the price to kind of settle in for a little bit and in this case it was a whole month right so it's not just like oh the market's going to go down two percent and then go right back up right so my perspective is while this is going on of course you want to be you know and again this video is for information purposes only i'm not giving out any advice but for me i want to stick with this as long as it occurs and be cognizant when it gets a little bit long in the tooth now are we long in the tooth here we're getting there right i mean the rsi i've talked about for a couple days for the last couple days it's not as hot as it was back here but we're getting there and we don't necessarily we're not you know there's nothing that says that we're going to get back to the same exact point you just want to be a little bit more cognizant and, and pay attention to how many positions you have on pay attention to the size of your positions um, whether or not you know taking things like taking targets um, you know taking off a trade or two into strength right those are the things that I try to do you know to kind of slim down positions also there's different risk between if you're holding options or um, stock, right? So for example, if you're holding short-term options and this happens, it doesn't even have to be for a whole month like it happened in September or for the majority of a whole month, right? If it happens even for three or four days, your short-term option positions are gone if you're on the wrong side of the market, right? If you're in a stock position, you can kind of weather that storm a little bit. We talk a lot about that. We've, we've had, we did a webinar with, um, with one of our members last week and we talked about we talked about this for about an hour and a half to two hours last week about not just this but you know a number of strategies to kind of help and, and improve um, which
which we're going to try to continue to do these types of webinars. But, um, you know, it's important to kind of look at what you're holding once the market starts to get, you know, a little bit or gets to the point of being, you know, into a mature swing. All right. So final point on this, this is what I wrote. Right. Um, you know, the white, the white hours are when the market essentially has momentum. And we really, we don't know how long the white hours are, gonna, are going to last. Um, one of the things that I tend to do is look for divergences, right? Sometimes that'll give us a clue if something's not right in the market. I could tell you, I'm still not seeing those divergences, right? So for now, I wanna, I, there's no change, right? For me, you know, in terms of what I'm seeing in the market, um, there's no reason you know, to say, hey, change what you're doing because the trend is still up and we're not super, super overbought yet. We're getting there, um, right? So everyone says that they want to dip, but once the market loses momentum after a big move, sometimes, not always, the market could spend some time, sometimes weeks, digesting and recouping that momentum, right? So bear that in mind. So that's a little bit of a thought when somebody says, hey, I just want a little bit of a dip, you know, and then I'll, you know, you're going to comfortably add stocks. <laughs> into, you're going to buy, you're going to buy the dip, right? Um, well, you know, just look at the, pa the past couple months, right? So, um, you know, you, we don't even have to go that far back in time to kind of look at some of these lessons, right? Now, um, if this also repeats over time, Right, we saw this in 2019 as well. You could look at the same same damn type of thing. Right, we saw this big move. Right, this was at the end of uh, 2018, beginning of 2019. Take a look, big swing higher, couple weeks to what? This actually, sorry, this was two months before we we went on to the next swing. This one was a particularly long one. This was all the way from October, right, until you know until January where we started to have that first move. And then, of course, we know what happened with COVID. But, you know, the point is being made here that, um, you know, really with these types of trends, what I try to do is manage them appropriately and try to stick in the market as long as you can. Now, the other thing too, right, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video about seeing setups in single names, right? If you, if you don't, if you begin to not see any more bullish looking setups, right? That is also a clue to not force trades. Um, but if you're still seeing new setups, then, you know, I participate, right? But, you know, when you get to the point where you start, when you stop seeing things that are making sense to you, then you can kind of back off. All right, guys, that's it for today's, for today's video. Again, really, you know, nice trading day. And, um, you know, I think overall, a lot of traders very happy at uh, Tribeca Trade Group with, um, you know, how we've been uh, trading this market up until now. So no jinx on that, of course. And uh, guys, have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.